our proverb for today has quite a wide scope. It covers, well, just about everything. Unless the Lord builds the house, there's the domestic realm, what you do at home, your family, things of a more private and personal nature. Unless the Lord builds the house, the builders labor in vain. But it doesn't stop there. Unless the Lord watches over the city, the, the public realm, the civic part of our life, the more public aspects of our existence and our community, unless the Lord watches over the city, the guards stand watch in vain. Whether you're at home or at work, whether you're among your personal family or out there in the marketplace, God says he's active. Whether at home or at work, Nothing we want to build or protect has any value or meaning unless God himself is there, unless God himself is active. It's a pretty bold statement. It's a pretty broad claim that this word of wisdom puts before us, that in every aspect of our life, God is present and active or it's not worth anything at all. It kind of reminds me of the comments of that crewman to an older woman reportedly coming on board of the steam vessel and she was a little nervous about this cross-atlantic voyage and the crewman said to her don't worry ma'am not even god could sink this ship of course you know that was a crewman aboard the titanic and while they didn't quite publicize it exactly like that, that attitude, not even God could sink the ship, was the attitude not only of the crew, but also of the captain and the engineers and the steamliner itself. They were so confident in their new technology. They were so confident in the works of their hands. They were all so confident that their ingenuity, their craft, their hard work had paid off, that they had plans for the future. And they knew with certainty this boat was unsinkable almost made it on its maiden voyage. Not, Not quite. But you see, when you're so caught up with confidence in what you are doing, there's, there's no room, no need to rely on God. Now, I'm not saying that any of us here are in danger of saying something like, not even God could sink my family. Not even God could cause my company to downsize. Not even God could take down the mighty communities of Ann Arbor Ipsy. No, I I don't think any of us are going to say something like that sometime today. But it does raise the question, where's your confidence? When you think about things you want to build or protect, when you think about your future, when you think about your life at home and at work and you imagine what's going to happen next, Where do you place your confidence? The honest answer is for people like us who are so busy, whose schedules are so full, who can't seem to take a breath. For people like us who are so busy, it's hard to rely on God. It's hard to be confident in His activity. It's hard to slow long enough to think He might even care about what we're doing at home or at work. And I think that busy activity has a a deeper root. I think it's not just that our calendars are jam-packed full. Hey, I spoke to someone sitting right over here before the 8.30 worship service. He was here about 8 because his wife was helping with the plants. And he had a book next to him. I said, hey, did you read that book? He said, no, I'm bringing it back today. I've tried for the last month, but I can't get into it. My schedule's just too busy. He's like 82. (laughs) Yeah. I'm hearing some amens out there, you know. I've I've got both a set of parents and a set of in-laws that have retired. It's a myth. There's no such thing. Retired. They're just tired all over again. Their, Their calendars are so packed. I've got to call mom and dad like a month and a half out. Hey, can you spare an hour next week? I thought I'd bring the grandkids up. Let me check my calendar. We're so busy from the youngest children to the most mature of us adults, our, ba- our, 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 our calendars are so jam-packed full, and yet I think behind the busyness is another more fundamental cause. You see, we live in a time and in a culture that highly values self-dependence and independence. 
we admire people who are able to acquire, build great wealth, and protect that wealth. And people typically in the value system and the mythology even of our culture gain wealth through hard work and perseverance. Nose to the grindstone. Keep at it. Keep busy. Keep persevering. We like people who are independent and who can make it on their own. In fact, one of the founding documents of our country is the Declaration of Independence. We don't need you anymore. We're fine on our own. We don't want your interference. We're going to get the job done. The good American work ethic that says anybody can work hard enough and get just a little lucky and make good. It's not our national anthem, but it certainly could be. I did it my way. The American ideal to get done with our life having known we did it in a unique and independent way. And if that's your model, if that's your model for success, if being independent and working hard is the key and secret to success for the future, then your calendars end up getting fuller and fuller and fuller. Because if we're just busy enough and work hard enough, we're told we'll succeed. Self-assurance and self-reliance are the virtues in our culture. A far cry from being dependent, from needing someone or something else. Being dependent in our culture, think about it. Who are the, the dependent people? Who are the people that need other people? They're not our heroes. They're not our role models. I was talking to somebody last week who who suggested that he'd always like to have the t-shirt made that said, my model for success is a 33-year-old homeless man who was beaten to death. Uh, He meant Jesus. Get it? Never mind. I thought it was... (laughs) I would have bought the t-shirt, okay? I would have bought the t-shirt, but... But reason, one reason I like the t-shirt because it flies in the face of what we typically think of models of success in our kind of average American culture. Your model for, for success is not one, someone who's dependent or needy, but someone who's independent and self-assured. And then God's word shows up. And then we get this wisdom saying in Psalm 127, Unless the Lord builds the house or guards the city, then the the workers, the guardsmen, have no chance of getting the job done. This proverb is the death of our own self-reliance, our own independence. It says we can't accomplish anything in this life apart from God's gracious activity. But Psalm 127 isn't asking you to try to accomplish anything apart from God's gracious activity. The proverb in Psalm 127 invites you to see God's fingerprints all over your life. You're invited to see your daily, weekly activity as so much more than a daily grind, as so much more than that that hamster wheel that goes faster and faster and faster but never gets any. We just got a hamster a few weeks ago. Nine o'clock at night, you hear the thing going, go to bed! Don't you have days like that? It's 9 o'clock at night, and you're still going, rrr, 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 rrr. and you try to close your eyes and go to sleep, and it's 11 and midnight and 1 and 2. I saw that on Facebook the other day. I'm still awake. It wasn't me. I'm still awake. What am I doing awake? And they got like 5 or 6 or 12 comments from people just like that because they're awake too, and their minds are going, God intends for you so much more than a hamster in his wheel, running as fast as he can but getting nowhere. In fact, the work you do, listen to this because this is really important. The work you do, whatever your work is, okay? And your work may be as a a teenager or as a student getting ready to start a school year again. Your work may be as a retiree or grandparent or neighbor or friend. Your work may be 9 to 5 or not anywhere close to 9 to 5. But your work, whatever it is, you do all of it in light of your relationship with Jesus Christ. It's not just Sunday morning stuff that God is a part of. 
He's a part of your day, of your week, yes, even of the rat race. Nothing you do is meaningless because God himself is active in your life. God is active not just in this hour, but he's active in the daily details of your weekly routine. Psalm 127 is a psalm of ascent. That means it was a song that would have been sung by pilgrims. Pilgrims, as they made their way from the lower country up into the foothills and from the foothills up into the mountains and from the mountains up to the mountain of Jerusalem and the Temple Mount where the Temple of Yahweh stood. And these were pilgrims on their way to certain special high feast and holy days where they were going to be forgiven and blessed and give thanks in the very presence of God. And yet, even on that journey, in that climb up the mountain to the presence of God, these people had on their lips a song that said, unless Yahweh himself builds the house, the builders labor in vain. Unless Yahweh himself guards the city, the watchmen watch in vain. In other words, God himself is there with the builder building. God himself is there with the watchmen watching. God himself is there present in the daily activity of his people. You do not have a God who is content to sit far off distance somewhere in some religious cloud who watches from from a great height, everything all his little ants are doing, you have a God that is willing to to get dirty, to get into the details of your daily life, to be present with you, not just in worship, but when you leave this place, you've got a God willing to get his dirt under his fingernails. That's the kind of God you have. And the fullest expression of that longing of God to be not just in your life for an hour on Sunday, but to be with you in your daily routine, the fullest expression of God with us like that is Jesus. Jesus, who is willing to set aside the full expression of his Godhead to take on human flesh, to be born, to be a little baby, to live, to be apprenticed to his father. The word for carpenter could even include stonemason, but we know either way, the kid had calluses growing up. He had to. He had to be hauling rocks or wood. He had to be helping his dad in the workshop. We know he had calluses on his feet and dirt between his toes. Jesus was willing to come and get into the nitty-gritty details of human existence because that's where God wants to dwell with you, right where you live. So Jesus, too, sang those songs of ascent as he went to worship with his family from the low country up into the hills, up into the mountains to the temple. Jesus himself sang the song, unless the Lord builds the house, the laborers build in vain. And that same Jesus was willing to get not just dirty, but bloody. He was willing to climb another hill within sight of that temple mount. He was willing to take on himself all the division that, all the sin that kicks God out of our daily busy routines, all that separation he took on himself. He entered our sinful world and took our sin. And when he died, you know that that temple in the temple, the the curtain in the temple, the thing that separated the holiest place where God dwelled, that separated God from his people, that curtain was rent in two. A loud proclamation that Yahweh has left the building. Your God is not confined to an hour time slot on Sunday or 15 minutes of portals of prayer in the morning. Your God lives with you. He suffers with you. He dwells with you in your daily, every day kind of routine. He's with you parents as you parent. He's with you workers as you work. He's with you students as you stewed. He's with you in your daily activity, in the ups and downs, in the frustrations, in the triumphs, in the defeats. He's with you when your job is going great and when your job is just plain. He's with you when you struggle. He's with you when you can't pray. He's with you when you're depressed. He's with you when you cry tears of joy. 
He's with you when you're washing dinner dishes. He's with you when you're putting gas in your car. He's with you when you're telling your teenager to get back to studying. And he's with you when your parents are really annoying. He's with you in the hospital. He's with you at the graveside. He's with you when you read the newspaper online or in that old-fashioned paper form. He's with you when you recycle and when you don't. He's with you when you crack a Miller Lite or if you're at Ann Arbor Brewing Company. He's with you. He's with you in the ordinary mundane, dirty, difficult details of your life. You see, it's not just a statement of our dependence, it's a promise of God's presence. It's not just a statement of our dependence, it's a promise of God's presence. Unless the Lord builds the house, and he does, the Almighty God is there in with and under the work of the builder to build the house, to build your home and your family and your private life. He's there so that your family life is not in vain. Unless the Lord watches the city, and he does, he's taking care of even of Ann Arbor Ipsy. He actually cares about us. He cares about you and your school district and your community. He's there. He promises to be there, to be active in, with, and under your work, too. It's a word of wisdom. It speaks to our dependence on God himself. And it speaks a promise that he's there even when you forget he's there. He's there in those details you think aren't consecrated, and yet because you are his consecrated people, everything you do, you do as a follower of Jesus. Unless the Lord builds the house, the builders labor in vain. Unless the Lord watches over the city, the guards stand watch in vain. You've got a busy schedule. And you've been told time and time again that the best way you can be successful is to be independent and self-reliant. And God's word says, no. God's word says, come again and be dependent. Give up your independence this week and be dependent again on the God who isn't just here. He's here but he's not just here. He's with you every moment of your week. You need God, and he promises to be there. Amen.